An Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales Book 4, Chapter 11 On Anxiety Anxiety, or disquietude, is not merely a temptation itself, but it is a source from which and by which several other temptations arise. Sadness is that mental pain which is caused by the involuntary evils which affect us, whether they be external, such as poverty, sickness, and contempt, or whether they be internal, such as ignorance, dryness, aversion, and temptation. Thus, when the soul is conscious of some such evil, she is dissatisfied because of it, and this produces sadness. Forthwith she desires to be free from it, and seeks the means thereto. And so far she is right, for it is natural to us all to desire that which is good, and avoid that which we hold to be bad. If the soul seeks means of deliverance for the love of God, she will seek them with patience, gentleness, humility, and calmness, rather awaiting such deliverance from the goodness and providence of God than from her own exertions, industry, or diligence. But if it is through self-love that she seeks deliverance, she will be eager and excited in the search of means thereto, as though it depended more on herself than on God. I do not say that she esteems such to be the case, but that she acts as though it were. Consequently, if she does not speedily find what she desires, she becomes impatient and greatly disturbed, which, instead of diminishing the original bad thing, makes it worse, and the soul is distressed and grieved beyond measure, her courage and strength failing so that she believes her trouble to be irremediable. Thus you see how an uneasiness, which in the beginning is justifiable, engenders disquietude, which in its turn brings on an increase of anxiety, which is highly dangerous. Anxiety is the soul's greatest enemy, sin only excepted. Just as internal disturbance and seditions ruin a commonwealth and incapacitate it for resisting external aggression, so when the heart is anxious and disquieted within itself, it loses the power to preserve those virtues which are already acquired, and also the means of resisting the temptations of Satan, who does not fail, as the saying is, to fish in such troubled water. Anxiety proceeds from an ill-regulated desire to be delivered from the bad things we experience, or to acquire the good to which we aspire. Nevertheless, nothing aggravates evil and hinders good as much as anxiety and perturbation. When birds are taken in a snare or net, they cannot escape because they flutter and make all kinds of disorderly exertions to get free, by means of which they do but entangle themselves the more. Therefore, if you earnestly desire to be delivered from some bad thing or to attain to some good, above all things, calm and tranquilize your mind, and compose your judgment and will. Then, quietly and gently pursue your aim, adopting suitable means with some method. When I say pursue them quietly, I do not mean negligently, but without hurry, care, or disquietude. Otherwise, instead of obtaining your end, you will spoil all, 
and be but the more embarrassed. My soul is continually in my hands, and I have not forgotten thy law, was the exclamation of David. Frequently, during the day, if you can, but at least night and morning, examine yourself, whether your soul is in your hand, or if it has not been snatched from there by some passion or anxiety. Examine whether your heart is under your control, or if it has not escaped from there in pursuit of some ill-regulated emotion of love, hate, envy, lust, fear, vexation, or joy. And if your heart has strayed, before all things seek it and softly lead it back into the presence of God placing your affections and desires back under His guidance and in obedience to His holy will. Just as those who fear to lose some precious treasure hold it carefully in their hands, so, imitating King David, we should always say, My God, my soul is troubled, but it is always in my hand. Therefore, I do not forget thy law. However small and unimportant your desires may be, do not allow them to disquiet you. For if you do, they will be followed by greater and more important desires, which will find your heart more disposed to anxiety and disorder. When you feel yourself disposed to be anxious, commend yourself to God, and resolve in no way to gratify your desire until your anxiety is entirely dissipated, unless it concerns something which cannot be deferred, in which case you must gently and quietly restrain the course of your desire, softening and moderating it as much as possible, and above all, acting not in accordance with your inclination, but with reason. If you can disclose your anxiety to the guide of your soul, or at least to some pious and trustworthy friend, doubt not that you will be speedily relieved, for sympathy in the sufferings of the heart has the same effect upon the soul as, they say, bleeding has upon the body of one laboring under grievous fever. They say it is the most effectual remedy. Thus St. Louis counseled his son, If your heart be ill at ease, hasten to open it to your confessor or to some pious person, and by means of his comfort you will be enabled to bear easily your affliction. End of chapter 11